Now when we come to that part again, praise the Lord, we're on our way to the land that's born upward, to the land of endless day, gathering sheep. Let's try the course now. Come on. Praise the Lord, we're on our way to the land of endless day, gathering sheep. Beautiful sheep. Good, now let's get it again. All right. Oh, we will sing and we will pray and our pastor's voice will make gathering sheep. Sunday morning when you were studying up on the mountain, gathered your disciples around you and was teaching them in the Beatitudes just the things that they should do. You said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when man shall revile you in persecution, say all manner of evil against you. Falsely for my name's sake, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. As in this manner you taught us all that we should pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now those places may take their places. The adult class move forward if you can, while the boys get a crown. because we have a rebound between each one of those uh, pilasters there. Rafters hanging down is a rebound. If you want to come to a closer to this few speech, you're more than welcome. While we're doing this, if you desire, let us turn now to Genesis, the 22nd chapter, and then also turn to Romans, the 4th chapter, for just a, a short message this morning before the <coughs> healing service in our Sunday school teaching. Genesis 22. Anyone need a Bible? Did you forget yours? If you did, just raise up your hand if you want one to study from. We have a number of them back here. We'd be glad to have one of the ushers to bring them right to you if you desire. When I see some hands up. Brother Roy, would you have a brother? Harvey here, Miss uh, G. H. Harvey, if you stand a little on it. Have you got your boy with you? All right. We have prayer just in a little bit. More. All right, Miss Harvey. All right. Now we're going to speak just a little or have Sunday school. It's customary here that we uh, have our Sunday school lesson. But while I'm around home, I usually I uh, they. Give away, let me have the Sunday school on account of praying for the sick. And then our pastor will bring the message for the morning right after <clears throat> this part of the service. And we'll try to give him the platform just as quick as possible by 11 o'clock if the good Lord will. Now, <clears throat> there's many requests, and uh, I'm praying.
praying for you all constantly and everywhere. I want you to pray for me. I have something, the reason I'm at home so long about this time, I'm seeking God's divine way for me to go in my next services, as I promised him I would. I'm not trying to rush the Lord, because he knows all things, but I'm asking him to show to me a vision of what I must do or where my next move will be. And since I have come from Africa, there's only been one vision that had taken place, and that was the other morning. Then it come two or three times to the day. And I believe that he is near now. Uh, Ephesians usually come in a cluster. If you notice in the Bible, upon the, uh, our brothers of days ago, that they usually had a bunch of visions that would move into Daniel or to Joseph, and then you'd be a, a space there where there wouldn't be any. I've often wondered if I should carry my services the way I've been carrying Just pray for, oh, maybe... I get to a dozen or two of a night or something like that where there's thousands of them are waiting. And it just keep coming to my heart. It, I shouldn't do that. It, God had given me the authority to, to put the diseases to break the power of Satan. And Wednesday night a week, I come down here to the tabernacle and there's a group of people gathered in. So I just laid like a fleece before the Lord. And I said, Lord, I never did walk out. I had many times. I've always questioned the people. First, do you believe? How much do you believe? Do you believe I'm able to do this? And all these different things like that. And then, and then I'd wait and get him on a platform and wait till I saw a vision to see just exactly what was going on. Then I'd pronounce it just what it was. And it's so slow I could hardly get to the people. But a few days ago, I was wondering, many times I'd be standing on a platform where there may be 100,000 people. And first thing you know, some real bowl or something just rise up in me and I'd go right on and call that demon and cast it out. And I thought, that's strange. And then here I begin to think, many of you have read my little book, no doubt, all in here. And of many instances there, I've seen him one night in Portland where a demon, oh my, man weighing 300 pounds about, runs the platform, and he said, well, you hypocrites, said, I'll show you how much man of God is insane man out of the institution. And he run up the platform and, and was going to break my neck, and, and 500 preachers just fell back from him, and he Drew back his arm and said, I'll break every bone in your body. And I weighed 128 pounds and him about 300. And great deep chest and oh, what a, a powerful man he was. Well able to carry out his threats. And in the, right in the midst of it, why, there was just something moved up on me and I just walked out to where he was. He said, tonight I'll break every bone in your frail looking body. I said, in the, because you have challenged God's spirit, tonight you'll fall over my feet. In the name of the Lord, every two prophets is made. And he rushed forward to me and said, I'll show you whose feet I'll already spit in my face when he came up. And he drew back his great big fist, just now. Satan come out of the man. And he threw up his arms and screamed and fell across my feet to the police had to pull him off. Now he didn't have any faith in me. <laughs> and I see it takes a bold challenge. I've been praying for everyone to come. The other night, there's people here, a woman couldn't speak. As soon as that evil power was challenged, she spoke. <laughs> and there's a lady here that had a big water on her throat. And I just walked up to her and said, Satan, I, I just have the authority to break your power. You had to come off of her. I said, you see what? I said, will you believe that? And she said, yes. I said, all right, you go home, put a string around your neck and measure it. See how, how big it is? And every three days, cut a piece of string off there. See how it starts shrinking. The first day is about that much. Second day about like that. The third day about like that. Where he went down. See, it's the same string she brought here at the platform. And then I begin to hear it come in. And I'm just asking God, would that be His divine will? And the other morning about, I've got a little girl, eight, ten, ten months old, little Sarah, and uh, she's a sweet little darling. And I haven't got to be with her very much. And I spoiled her. I don't that. Just hold her in my arms all the time. You would too if you didn't get to see that little chump of love no more than what I get to see her, you know, just now and then when I'm home. So I, I guess I spoiled her a whole lot. She's cutting some teeth and she's gotten real sick. She must have got a dysentery, all sorts going around. I guess some of your families have it too. Real sick vomiting and dysentery. And so she was crying. Her mother was so tired she just didn't wake up. I never either. And I woke up and I would sleep back in the second room from her. And her mother and her and there and the little girl and I sleeping in the other room, little Rebecca. And so uh, 
And Billy Paul was staying with him at Christmas that night. So I, I woke up. I heard, I said, what made me wake up like that? I heard his voice say, go to your baby and give her a drink of water. I went in the room. And she was crying. She cried a long time. She must not have woke her mother up in her little crib. I went and got a glass of water. So I went in. A little thing for her to drink the whole glass of water. And there in her condition, then with the dysentery she'd had, just, I thought, isn't that lovely how sweet he is to do that? That's the second time, a third time. One time I was at Sioux Falls. She's only three months old. She was laying on the bed. Her mother walked out talking to some people. And I was shaving like that, getting ready for the meeting. And I was standing there shaving and I heard the angel Lord say, get your baby right quick. And I laid my razor down and run around and just one half a minute longer, she had been gone. She's on a high bed about like that and she had both arms, she's just rolling and it rolled her head, little head hanging down her arm, just sliding off. I had to run real quick to grab her just as she went on. He's lovely, sweet. A little later from that, there's a young girl. She's perhaps sitting here this morning. Yeah, I don't see her, but she comes sparingly. She's a member of church in New Albany, a very prominent church, an outstanding church in New Albany. I've been down there. She wants, she's got a mental condition, of kind of a psychic neurosis. And she uh, came, she won't even leave the city or anywhere. She starts screaming and crying, going on. So I, I prayed for her two or three times, but something wouldn't let me challenge that thing. Somehow, I don't know, I just couldn't do it. She's a good friend to a nurse that lives in the neighborhood there. They come up there, and she's getting worse. She's been that way for about eight years. So she came up the other day, and she said, I told her, I said, Sis, the only thing I know that there's a call there somewhere. I, I don't know what it is. And I said, I, if you could come up. She said, I've been praying for her. My pastor and said, my pastor sent me up here. I said, go see Brother Billy and see what he said. Well, I... I said, I don't, I don't know, sis. I said, I'm just like your pastor. I said, have you confessed all your sins? Everything. Sunday school teacher. That's a great class. Doing a good work. But just that hungover. Well, I, I didn't know what to do. You just about imagine how I'd feel. I, I just didn't know what to do. We took her in a room. I said, well, all right, come on up. One people come. We just stopped everything. I got her in a room. I sat down and just started talking about the uh, uh, genealogies and about the beginning, the origin of time, and everything, and watching her, is that same morning, God's always there at the crucial moment, you know. And after a while, I looked out, there come a vision moving up. I seen an automobile going swiftly. I said, your conditions has something to do with an automobile. She said, no, I never was in a wreck. I said, just sit humble. So to see in a car, you almost get hit by a train. She jumped, she said, oh, I said, yes, you're not with your husband. You're with another man. Your husband's overseas in war at that time. And when I had to begin to bring it on down, I said, the things that you've done, the immoral things, you told him about some of it, but you didn't tell him about it all. When she started screaming and holding her face like that, I said, you're going to have an operation out long ago, too, for your tonsils. You're afraid to take anesthetic, afraid you'd tell that. Or she just screamed and fell on the floor. She said, that's the truth. I said, how can you ever get anywhere that hang? She said, I asked God to forgive me. I said, you never sinned against God. You sinned against your husband. And he vows. I said, you go back and make that right. Then come. I can control that demon man. See? I said, by the way, your husband, I described how he looked. Never seen him in my life. I said, he's got the same thing to confess to you. I said, now, if you don't believe it, call him on the phone and tell him to meet you. She went and called him on the phone. They met on the road. And here they come back. Tears running down their cheeks. Forgive one another. The demon left her. And there she was free. See? Now, I might have screamed and hollered over that demon and cast and everything else, and it never left until that was corrected. See? See, you've got to find the cause before you can find the cure. You go to a doctor. You say, I got a headache. Well, he might give you an aspirin. Oh, it come back. Maybe you got stomach troubles causing a headache. Maybe you got an infection somewhere that's causing a fever, making you have headaches, something like that. You have to go back. That doctor has to diagnose that case down until he finds where the cause is. Then you get rid of the cause, just like a hole in a bucket. If you're pouring water in, the water just keeps leaking out. Better stop the hole up first, you see. And that's, now there's where I lay. What must I do? Now, the biggest thing in my meeting, what, it, you don't get prayed for it. And I prayed massive prayer for all of them. But I say, well, if you just touch me, if you do this, 
and they, they see those things take place. And it is right. The Bible said they lay hands on the sick and they recover. Then when you start that, I've tried that twice and through the line. Lay hands on them. But if they, their life isn't combed through by the Holy Spirit to find out if there's anything in there, they don't feel they've been prayed for. Here's my secretary sitting here and they said, no, it gets a letter. <laughs> isn't it right? They just think they're not. Now, there I'm up against something. And I, I believe if I could, maybe could preach. And I'm not much of a preacher. But if I could get the people to see that they got to absolutely come clean with God. Then I believe I have the authority by Jesus Christ to break the power of any demon there is. When the Peter and John passed through the gate called Beautiful, they never asked the man if he was a believer or what he was or anything about it. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I'll give you. That in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. He picked him up and held him there until his ankle bones got strength and away he went. Walk. Now there's something in there that I'm studying on, and I want you to pray for me. All right, will you do it? <laughs> All right, God bless you. Turn Genesis 22 now. I'm going to read some for the lesson before prayer service. All right, we're going to start along about the... Let's just talk of it a little bit. I'll tell you what we'll do. I want you to get Romans 4 also. We're going to teach a little about faith. That's what we all need a whole lot of, isn't it? Faith. It's not, a, it's not an evidence, only it's a substance. Faith itself is a substance. And an evidence of things that the senses of the body won't declare. And I thought maybe in teaching this would, would spur your faith up. So you get it to a level to where that God can move into you and bless you. Now, let's begin reading about the 8th verse of the 22nd chapter is dealing with Abraham. And uh, he was first called Abram, and then he received his priest name, or his father name, which was Abraham, which means the father of nations. Now listen, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went, both of them, together. What a dramatic scene here. Way back, 1872 years before the coming of the Lord. God foreshadowing now, speaking, getting ready to make a, a parable. And he, Abraham was an old man, 90 years old, and Sarah... Or Abraham was a hundred and Sarah was ninety. That's about forty years beyond the menopause. She, the life in her was dead. The life in Abraham was dead. An old man at that age. And God appeared to him when he was ninety and nine and said, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. Just think at a hundred years old. And he told him what was going to take place. That all the nations will be blessed in you because... That you're going to, I'm going to give you a son by Sarah. And I think a hundred years old. And then the Bible said that Abraham, you know, I ought to make a sacrifice and kept the birds off of it until the sun went down and how the darkness come over and the Spirit of God came down and talked to him. And Abraham believed God. Now, I want to deal with that subject. Believing God are taking him at his word. Now, Abraham didn't have any uh, uh, great cloud of witnesses like we have today, for Abraham himself was a Chaldean, the father of the Jews. But he was a Chaldean from the city of Ur. And he was called out from among his people to walk in a strange land. How beautiful that type the Christian walk today that we have to come out from our associates of the world. To walk in a strange land, or strange to the to the first land that we walked in, and the land that we call today is walk in the Christian way, walk with Christ, separate ourselves from the things of the world. And he did that by faith, and he sojourned in a strange land, not even knowing where he was going. The only thing God said, "Come out, Abraham, and go into a land," and he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. Now that was what 
we would refer to in the natural life would be, I'd say, instinct. You would naturally call it, but we call it leadings of the Holy Spirit. God called him out from among his people, out of the land, his own homeland from his people, and he dwelt in strange lands, professing it. He was a pilgrim and stranger, seeking a city, looking for a city. Oh, my, how that still comes down to his children. That strain of looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. And God blessed him. And then when he was real old, he said, Now, Abraham, you walk before me, be perfect. And how he was going to bless him and multiply him. Now, if we look at the natural side, why it was impossible for him to, for him to have this child about Sarah. Why all the resources of life is gone. Sarah's a, a 90 years old. Abraham, 100. Why, you tell that to a doctor today, a, a man 100 years old and his wife 90 is going to have a, a child? Well, you know what they do? They lock you up in a psychopathic ward somewhere, saying, while well, the old fellow and old lady's a little off up here somewhere. But you don't look at circumstance. You look at the promise. If you go to looking, now that's the same way about maybe the lady in the wheelchair here, or some of you there with cancer. The, the doctor says you, you can't get well. Now, if you believe that, then you can't get well. But you've got to look at a divine promise. No man will call into his place. He said, Brother, come pray for my baby. Got black diphtheria and settled in a heart. The cartogram shows that the heart's done, drop plumb back, and it's gone. Well, they wouldn't let us in to pray for the baby. But when he got in there, well, all oh, of the intern, the doctor, no, sir, no, sir, you can't do it. You've got children you own, you can't do it. But yet, believing God, persuading, man was Catholic, that now, well, if the patient was dying and the priest was sure to give us the last rites, would you let him in? Oh, yes, those children are... I, that's not that's not the question. This is just as sacred as the last rite of the church. All right. Finally going in and kneeling down to the side of the baby and just prayed a simple little prayer, laid hands upon the baby, said, Lord God of heavens and earth who created all things, you give us the divine power to break the power of Satan over this life. In the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, come out of the child. Live. Turned around. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mother and I began laughing and going on. The little nurse was upset. She said, Say, you know how so it's all right to have faith, but this baby's dying. But how can you act so unconcerned about it? Why? That you misunderstood the doctor. So the doctor said the baby died. He's been unconscious now for over a day. That you misunderstood the doctor. The old patriarch said, No. I didn't under, misunderstand the doctor. I heard what he said. That the baby's dying. That why, but see, when this cartogram shows that, that heart and that condition, that it's never in all history ever raised up again. That it's all right to have faith, but that it, it can't, faith can't do nothing now. See, the old man with a study finger looked at the nurse and said, Lady, you're looking to that chart. I'm looking to a divine promise. Boy, he's even married now. All right. He laid like that for about 24 hours late. You know what? Once that heart began to come up. There it went. <laughs> See, when a divine promise is made, God solely under oath and obligation to take care of any of his promises. And his, the God is worth no more than what his word is worth. If that word is not effective, then God is not effective. That is God. Do you believe it? God. The Bible said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I'm worth no more than my Word, and you're worth no more than your Word. If I had a handful of wheat laying here in my hand, laid on this desk, there would never be nothing but wheat laying there. But plant that wheat in the ground, and it'll produce maybe a bushel of wheat. See? But the germ of life is in the wheat, but the wheat has to fall into the ground and die. Jesus said, it, or Paul, I believe it said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it remains alone. See? 
And that this is God, His Word. And when that Word anchors down in the, in the heart, oh, I can get you to see it. When that Word anchors there, it, it'll produce just what it says. It'll do just, it's God, it has to. But if it just say, well, I know the Word's there. Yeah, that's right. It just lay a handful. Of you. Yeah, it's, it'll be dormant. That's right. It won't move because, oh, I, I read the Bible, but until you can anchor that and say, yes, Lord, that's for me, then something's going to happen. It has to. Until that, it's just the written word. That's right. But when it's once it's anchored. Now, Abraham, he didn't look at his body. Said, All right, Lord, we'll have the baby. On down, we could go for hours on this. But we don't want to take too much time. Now he comes to the place where little Isaac's born. And here he's going out after receiving him. And probably this, Abraham is probably 120 years old, maybe for this time. 115, 20 years old, little Isaac, probably 15, 18 years old. And God said, now Abraham, said, I want you to take that boy up to the mountain up there and offer him up for a sacrifice. Now after he had received him, promising the father of nations, and here now, the only seed that he has, he said, take him up and destroy it. Double check. Oh, my. See? Now, I know you was old, and you believe me, and I give you this boy. And now you got a, you got an idea here now the promise is going to be fulfilled because you got the boy. But now, I want you to take the boy up and kill him. Well, now, what if Abraham say, then, Lord, now, look, I want to ask you something. Me here, maybe 120 years old, and I receive this boy, and poor Sarah can't hardly get around. She's so old, and, and she just wrinkled up and gone away nearly. And here I'm an old man, have to lean on the staff, and I'm walking like this, just barely can walk maybe, and I'm so old, and, and the boy is a, a young man here. I see what you've done, but... Uh, First, it'll, it'll tear my heart out, and then how am I going to be a father of nations, and you go kill him? But Abraham didn't stagger. That's the yes one. He takes the boy. Here they go. He didn't know how. Wasn't his business a question? He obeyed. Uh, your lady here might say, how am I going to walk? Maybe you've been crippled a long time. I don't know. Maybe some of the residents say, well, the doctor told me I couldn't live, Brother Ram. I'm going to die. That's not what we're talking about. That's a natural thing. And if you look to any of that, you will never live. But you've got to look to a promise that God made. And that's the promise. See, the inside of you, this outside is sin. Did you know that? You know your body's sin? That's the reason don't try to perfect that body. It's sin. Did you know that? It was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. And that soul was the same way until the soul died and then was born again of God. Then that soul can't die. The soul that sinners shall die. But he that believeth on me has everlasting life. Then there's an immortal life living in that body. Now that's like a stream coming from heaven like a core on the inside of a man. Now that's the part that's godly. It operates this body. But before this body can ever become perfected, the Spirit will bring it in submission to God to make you well, war all the time. But constant, Paul said, we'll never get more than he. See? Paul said, when I would do good, then evil is me. And there's a constant war, the flesh against the Spirit. And here, if you go look at the flesh, the doctor said, that I believe, look how it's simple, that you can't serve God. You've got to throw aside your senses God never give you those senses to trust Him with. God give you His Spirit to trust you. Trust him. Your sense is the only to contact, see, taste, feel, smell, and hear. But the, you yourself is that Spirit that lives in you. And when that's been regenerated and the old man died and the new man born again, that is a part of God. Then you become a son of God, an offspring of the Creator. Then you can believe the impossible thing because you're made up of the miracle working God. You're a part of it. It would have been natural for me to, to
to drink. My daddy drank. It'd be natural for me to use tobacco. My daddy did. My generation behind me did. So I said, why didn't you never smoke or drink? Well, when I was just a lad before I started into it, the Holy Spirit came down and said, don't you do it. There's the conversion, you see, in the beginning. And even way back before that, the morning I was born, when the angel of God stood over where I was at, that seed, while it was in the ground, was changed from a cuckoo bird. Don't you see what I mean? You get what I mean? Then in there is the Spirit. And from there is your immortal life. Then a man that's born to the Spirit of God does not commit sin. You get the Scripture straightened out there. If the, if the worshiper once purged has no more desire of sin or no more conscience of it. In the Old Testament, the worshiper come in and offered his sacrifice, went back out with the same desire to sin. But here, here it is. Yes. Hebrews said, when the worshiper in this case, who puts his hands on the Son of God's head, and his sins are purged by the sanctifying power of God, there's no more desire in there for sin. Oh, there it were lively. Then that makes you an offspring of Jehovah. And Satan can't hurt me then without hurting my father. You can't hurt that little girl there without hurting me. I'll tell you that. You can't hurt your children without hurting you. And then he's not willing that any should perish. Are suffer. But now before this flesh here, before the flesh can be perfected, it has to die like the soul dies. God never did have his perfect will for women and man to bring children in the earth. Did you know that? God made man himself out of the dust of the earth. After the fall, I won't argue about that because you know I've got some very funny views on it. But after the fall, then woman brought children in the world. God told her, because you take a life out of the world, you have to bring it in the world. Look what kind of a life it was. After sex, desire, fleshly. But then when that body dies and goes back to the dust of the earth, then God will take the immortal spirit out of it to the kingdom of God or to his throne, paradise. And then on the second coming of Jesus, my mother sitting there and my daddy is gone on. We'll never have to give this another body. But God will mold one. That's perfect and immortal and can't die. Now, Abraham takes Isaac and they start towards the mountain. Now the ninth verse. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. And laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar of on the wood. Now just before coming, I can see him coming away. He didn't tell Sarah where this was going, because she would have screamed out. I believe that it was Abraham's faith that performed the miracle in Sarah's womb, because she doubted it even last when, when it said so. It was Abraham's faith. So therefore, that's the reason it said... The prayer of faith shall say the thing. An individual's prayer, the affectional, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Or if you only knew that in your hand, Christ gave us the authority with his name by being Christian, the most powerful weapon the world has ever known. Prayer. It even changes everything. It'll change the mind of God. It did do it. After death was pronounced to a man, he prayed. God told the prophet, go back and tell him. I heard him. There. Prayer. Hold on. Billy Graham was asked recently. Max and Bowles, the days I've ever taken my book to Billy Graham on an interview. But and they want me to follow him there at Washington now. And that big auditorium, we can get it. But now, is it the Father's will? Just that last night to come to war, or night before last to come to Seattle. Got a great meeting going there, Captain Al Ferraro. Wants to come there now for me. Coming, they got a gospel meeting. Or, but is it the Father's will? 
That's the next one. Call me an auditorium free in Baltimore. See, 10,000 people don't have to pay a penny for it. 500 ministers with their names on the paper and after the house now. We'll sponsor 100%. We're all in prayer everywhere. Now, Father, where do you want me to go? That's the name. You tell me now and I'll go. There he is. Billy said, you know what I allow my success to? That I have no idea. That I hold a little bitty meeting. You heard of these meetings. You went out in a little tent. It was out there in Los Angeles. Just holding a small meeting. And all of Northwestern College fell with fasting and praying. And God sent down about 15 newspaper reporters and turned in his meeting and scattered over the nation. When I first started with these claims here, I told my church, stay on your face and pray. God began to move. First thing you know, I heard calls coming from Africa, from all over the world. How did they get in there? I don't know. Prayer never went up. Pray. Believe when you pray. That's it. Believe. Abraham, when he was old, he believed. And God told him to go and he obeyed. And on his road out, I see him take the servants and the little mules and they start out to get to the Mount of God. Oh, I just love this. Listen to this. He said to the servants, he said, you stay here while we go yonder and the lad and I shall return. Oh, oh. excuse me. My emotions get away from me sometimes. The lad and I shall return. How? I don't know. I'm going up there to kill him. Now, when he, he knows somehow, some way, he would return. And here he had a knife stick in his belt. And he laid the wood on Isaac's shoulder. And Isaac went up the hill, led by Abraham. Beautiful type, his only son, taken to the hill and the very altar that he laid his son on, he packed it up the hill on his back, a type of God sending his son up Golgotha with a wooden cross on his back, the very cross he was nailed on. And where God spared not his own son, there, little Isaac looked around, he said, Father, he said, here's the altar fire, but said, where is the sacrifice? He said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Bound his only little son, throwed him up on the altar, pulled out the knife, and started to take his life. God, you gave him. And as he started to pull the knife down, an angel grabbed his hand and said, Abraham, Abraham, say your hand. Just then, a little lamb Ram bladed in the wilderness, got his horns hooked around some vines. And Abraham rushed quickly, grabbed the ram, unloosed his son, and substitutionary, see, and killed the ram. Then God spoke to Abraham, said, Abraham, I know now you love me. You haven't withheld anything from me. Now look, for the text I want, let's read it in the 13th and 14th verse. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up a burnt offering in the stead of his son. You know who that ram was? That was Christ. Offered him up instead, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh, which was God's first redemptive name. Jehovah Jireh means the Lord will provide a sacrifice. Now, he was Jehovah Jireh, he was Jehovah Rabbi, and that's it, and on down like that. He has seven compound redemptive names. And substitutionary to a human life, took a lamb and offered up as a provided sacrifice that in Isaac all the nations would be blessed, and through Isaac came out Christ, and we being dead in Christ take on Abraham's seed and our heirs according to the promise. There you are. 
And that brings, not in our bodies, we are Gentiles in our bodies, we're sinners in our bodies, but in our souls being born again, with the same spirit was up on faithful Abraham, that strain down in there makes us want to trust God. But the body gets scared. Oh, if we're the children of Abraham, let's be as Father Abraham was. Now, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide the sacrifice. He did provide the sacrifice. Now, in Romans, the fourth chapter, let's begin the 17th verse. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, for instance, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickens the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Now you see, then we as Christians don't look, feel, see, taste, smell, hear when we're speaking to God. We just believe God. And it was imputed to Abraham for righteousness. Now the senses are worldly instruments. You believe it. Now God can control them. I'll admit that. But they are not given to us to contact our Heavenly Father because He is not in human flesh. God is a spirit. And we contact Him by spirit through faith believing. Now, if we... Hey, I, I have a... When I had any hair, I had wavy hair. It's like my daddy. My daddy had uh, a close set eyes, deep, blue. Many people say, you look like your dad. Or look like your mother. Well, I have a lot of things that... It's like my people. My old granddad built the tabernacle here. Some say, oh, you're just like your granddad. You look like your granddad. You talk like him. You have a nature like him. What is that? It's some strain that's been handed down through that generation. And I have here. You look like your parent. There's something about them. You see little girls say, don't she look like her mother? She just acts like her mother. You've seen people do that. Now... If we are born of our Heavenly Father, God, who calls those things which are not as though they were, there's got to be something in us like that. See? That's the reason that a real consecrated Christian that's all out for God looks to what God says instead of what you see or feel. That's the earthly man. If we walk in the flesh, we can't please God. We walk as in the Spirit. Now, God has done everything more than his duty was to do. He sent prophets, priests, he sent, he sent his son, he sent the Holy Spirit. He's done everything. And even took an oath by himself that he would perform these things. Now, when God gets rich and deep down here, the more you get of God in here, the more you believe God. Because it's more of him. And the more you cultivate this down here, the more you can believe God. It's just like a child. When he's a little bitty fellow, maybe he doesn't know very much about it, but as he grows older, he begins to get knowing more of God. And that's when this spirit in here takes the nature of our Heavenly Father, who is God. Like I take the nature of my earthly father, or my earthly parents. Now, look. Oh, I just love this. Listen now. God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. You know what? How did God make the earth? This earth that you're sitting on this morning. People don't want to believe in faith. How did God make the earth? He spoke it. Amen. Amen. You see? He spake. And the world come into existence. And this world this morning is the spoken word of God. And he believed his own word. Hey, watch it. And if God, you're all spring of him, and God is in you, he'll believe his own word. Though it can't be seen, felt, tasted, or anything, he'll believe it. 
You know what I mean? For God in you will believe His own word. Is that right? Then you don't look at things you see. You look at things that God said. Man don't have very much victory when he goes down. I know this exactly. God performs miracles through the skilled surgeon, through medical drugs. God does. Man doesn't do it. God does. Psalms 103, 3 said, I'm the Lord that heals all of thy diseases. No healing can come only through God. Somebody said, the devil can heal. The devil can heal. He can make clean. Like someone trying to get back to the manager said, why, Brother Branham said, well, my, uh, uh, Jesus said, there'll be many come to me in that day and said, Lord, have I cast out devils in thy name and everything like that? Well, said, that doesn't mean you're a Christian. It's all going to be signs to follow that lead. Brother said, but just a minute. That's the way you ecclesiastical bunch. <laughs> that you fail to see the real meaning of the scripture. You do always err in your heart, teaching for doctrine and tradition of man. They fail to see that to be the Son of God. They said he's the Elphibah. They fail to see the scriptures that clearly point to Jesus being that. He said, Oh, you hypocrites, that you can discern the face of the sky, but you can't discern the signs of time, or if you'd have known you should have known me. You know my day, the things that was supposed to be. And we see today that God promised in these last days that these things would take place. What's the matter with the people that are blind? That demon power, even in the ecclesiastical realm. He said, Jesus never said anything. They said we cast out devils. Jesus said, I know nothing about it. They were saying things that they didn't do. Oh, we, someone said a, a certain denomination church, he said, let the preacher bring him, heal one and I'll heal another. I said, if I heal one, you can heal another. He said, if you had a gift that you say you have, like that, said, won't you go out to the hospital and say, all oh, your sick people get up and come on out, because they all have to obey you. I said, are you a gospel preacher? He said, yes, sir. I said, go down here to Boot Lake George and say, you're all saved, come on out. He said, I could have been, believe me, I said, so can I. There you are. Faith in the Word. You couldn't save no one. And preaching the gospel of salvation doesn't make you a divine savior. No more preaching divine healing makes me a divine healer. But it's the faith in God's spoken word. And I know this, that some of us have more faith than others. And those who have abundance of faith are supposed to pray for those. But if you don't live the right kind of life, you better leave away from it. The devil of life is your prayer. But when you live right and do right and act right and have faith in God, Satan will tremble when you speak. Because God swore under obligation you take care of that prayer. That's true. Now, listen. Abraham, now an old man. Oh, I'll hurry through. An old man now, well stricken in age. Hundred years old, God had done giving this son about sixteen or eighteen years later, and making him maybe 118, 20 years old. He said, "Now take him up to strong." And Abraham staggered not at the promise. Listen to this: He was like God; he had a part of God in him, or he believed. Listen, eighteen first, and who against hope believed in hope. Wasn't even any hope for him. Yet he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which is spoken, so shall I see peace. Now listen, 19th verse, put on the jacket, hold up the cup, watch, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Now, if your father Abraham who you're a child of through Christ, consider not his own body when he was dead. What about yours, which is alive this morning? See what I mean? And that was before Christ came. That before any atonement was made. That's before the great cloud of witnesses has gone on. Before the Holy Spirit came. And Abraham believed God. Being not weak in faith, 
He considered not his own body. Don't consider your sickness. Consider what God said about it. If I had considered mine, when male brothers told me you're finished, I'd have been finished. But I didn't consider my body. I didn't consider my sickness. I didn't consider what they said. I considered what God said. But when I was dry, going around here, glasses on, couldn't even get a haircut, take my glasses off in the barber, my head shake that extra down, they didn't cut somebody else's hair while they get back in the barber chair and try to cut mine. What if I would have considered it? But I didn't consider the blindness of my eyes when I learned of God. Well, the doctor told me one mouthful of solid food will take your eyes. When I pulled up, my mother sitting here as a witness. They are giving me barley water and strained prune juice. I lived on it for a year nearly. They said, well, one mouthful of solid food would kill him. I just began to read the Bible and found God in my soul. I read in there words of whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it. There's never been a prayer said at our table. I remember Dad sitting on the corner there. I said, can we pray? Mom looked over and started crying. I didn't know what to do. I said, God, had the Bible laying on the table. I said, if I die, I'm coming home trusting you. Your word said this. I've got to either consider what the doctor said or consider what you said. I've got to word for a year and I ain't no better. I'm getting worse. I'm not considering what he said anymore. I'm considering what you said. I asked the blessing. We had beans and cornbread and onions. I took a dish full of them out and started eating them. The first bite went into my stomach like to kill me. I had to hold my hand over my mouth to keep it from coming back. And it kept coming back and I swallowed down. Coming back and I swallowed down. But I didn't consider my stomach. I considered what God said about it. Not what I felt. It is burning me up. I went out on the street and was walking down the street like there's a water running out of my mouth. I said, how are you feeling, Billy? I said, wonderful. <laughs> Days passed. Weeks passed. Still walking. Stand down the ditch. With my stomach like this, holding my hand like that, tapping like that, thinking, oh, how I love Jesus. Lay it down and throw some more dirty in the Oh, how I love Jesus. It's belching that food up, coming back. So swimmy headed, I can hardly work. But how you feeling this morning? Billy, you sick? I said, dude, I feel wonderful. And later on, when I testified, somebody said, you lied then. I said, no, I never. I wasn't talking about these senses here in the body. They're dead. I reckon Christ alive in me. I said, I was taking what he said, and I felt wonderful about it. There you are. Consider not your own body. Consider not the diseases. For they are of the dead. Ryan, consider God's promise. Someone not long ago said, now look. You can't preach divine healing in the atonement. Smart, happy preacher. We just do follow that. I said, now I won't argue with you about the atonement, which I know you haven't got a foot to stand on. Very fundamental. I said, I know you haven't got a foot. Here's one scripture. I said, boy, you'll take the whole thing out. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. The chancellor of our peace upon him with his stripes, we are healed. I said, where do you apply that to? In Calvary? I said, you believe the seven redemptive names, compound names, belongs to Jesus? If he wasn't and didn't fulfill it, in him was them seven compound names, he wasn't Jehovah Jireh. There is Jehovah Jireh. God's provided sacrifice. And you'll have to admit that or say he wasn't the Son of God. That if he is Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Rabbi, the healer also. For all seven compound names, our victory, our better. And our shield and our buckler and our healing and our salvation, our provided sacrifice, all laid in him. And when he died at Calvary, he all principality raised up, threw his hands up to the finish. Hallelujah. Devils tremble, hell shock, the tank went every way. And he rolls up on Easter morning. I am he that was dead is alive again. There he is. Jehovah Rabbi. Jehovah Manasseh. Jehovah, Jireh, God's provided sacrifice. Couldn't have a word to say. In fact, there is Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the brass serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And shining that light of God. Back there in a pipe, looking up on a brass serpent, which was a symbol. The 
last time I heard you have to die. And the poor fellow was shaking. He said, what can I give to you before I kill you? He said, a glass of water. So he went and got the glass of water, and he's holding his hand, and trembling like that, he couldn't hold him. And he said, now, wait a minute, straighten up. He said, I'm not going to kill you or take your life until you drink that water. And the slave threw it on the ground. <laughs> What's he going to do? If he's a just man, if he'll keep his word, if he don't keep his word, he's not a just man. He has to set him free, no matter what the law of the land says. And if Jesus said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, he's got to keep it. He's just. That's woman or no woman, that's his word. Boy, I went away not long ago to a certain seminary. To learn a whole lot of stuff you ought to have learned. So his old mother got sick. One of her neighbors belonged to a full gospel church. They brought the pastor home and said, Let me bring the pastor up here and pray for you. That he's a good, righteous man. And he believes in God, so they come pray for him. So she said, All right, the doctor couldn't do that for us. So the young man came up there, the pastor, and prayed for the elderly woman. And laid his hands on her according to James, uh, according to Mark 16. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He come up and laid his hands upon the, the woman. A few days she was up and going about her work as well. When her son returned home from the college, why, he was so happy, you know, and he said, his mother so happy. He said, how you been getting along, mother? said, just fine. I said, oh, son, I forgot to tell you something. He said, while you was away these four years, said, I got sick. And you know, Mrs. So-and-so over here belongs to that full gospel church. Said, her pastor come up and laid hands on me according to Mark 16, and I got well. So the doctors couldn't do nothing for me when I had that sick spell. So that's how I got well. He said, well, Mother, I want to inform you something. Said, of course, the way to college, we learned this. Said, the last nine verses of Mark 16 isn't inspired. So that was put in there to the Vatican. Said, there's no history that says that that word in there is inspired. And the little woman said, praise God, praise God. He said, what's the matter with you, mother? She said, if God could heal me with words that isn't inspired, what could he do with that that isn't inspired? There you are. If he could do that with uninspired words, what would he do with that that is inspired? When there's 600 and something promises directed to the church in the last days that these things will take place, and his power is yet the same, Jesus Christ the same yesterday day and forever. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, please you receive them. If you abide in me in my word, you ask what you will and it will be done unto you. The things that I do shall you also. Greater than this for I go to my Father. Go on with you always, even in the world. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name and agree upon anything and ask, they shall receive it. Forget it, my brother. It's God's will to do it. Yes, there's only Satan robbing you. Believing and against hope, believed in hope that he might be the father of many nations, according to that which is spoken, so shall I see be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Not circumstances. Not what somebody else said. What if somebody else died with you got the same thing? Don't consider it. See? When he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, she was included in it. God never gives Sarah the promise to give Abraham the promise. But Sarah was included. He made the promise in Christ Jesus, and I was included in him. You were too. See? He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Therefore, it was imputed to him for righteous. Now, it was not written for his sake alone, it wasn't imputed but, uh, uh, unto him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offense and was raised again for our justification. Oh, brother, that just, that just hit the devil in the face of that 365 days a year. You're a liar. There's the word. I am healed. If somebody comes up and puts it on you, if somebody went out here and done some kind of something to you and let you get well, it doesn't inspire you. But here's what it is. He that believeth, I am healed now. 
If God come down and heal me positive right out with a miracle, it wouldn't be as great as it would if I can see the promise of God and take it into my heart. Stand there. I can say, Jesus is now healing me. For I have accepted his word. It's in my heart. He is now interceding for me before the Father. I shall be well. There's what God does. Stand there on his words. That's right. He's healing me now every day. That was one of the garden. I see. I just give her something to do, so it just didn't put in one at all. But she was happy. She said, oh, look, look. And the next day, it's about that much. The next day, it's about that much. She put it all together and said, that can't be wrong. <laughs> see? There you are. When Elijah had closed the heavens, that it rained not in the space of three years, Elijah did that. That he reigned out for three years and six months. And when he ducked his head between his little old skinny knees, probably if he'd come up to your door this morning and run him away. Fur all right over his head like a, I don't know what, little piece of sheepskin wrapped around him like this and a cruise oil on a stick and here he comes. That bald head was shining. He sat down there, put his knees down, head down between his knees, and he prayed. God! The trouble's out of the way now. Israel has repented. Come, Lord, and send him rain. Like that woman the other day, when sin has gone out, I said, Satan, you can't hold her. Said, no, sir. That's it. Come, Lord. All right. The trouble is gone. He prayed six times. Come back down. That didn't stop him. He kept on praying. That's right. Then after a while, Gehazi goes up for his service, looks, and he comes back and he says, Oh, I see a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. While the sky would have to rain for three years and six months, Brass! Brass speaks of divine judgment, the brazen order. Judgment upon the nation that had forgot God. Brass the sky. Wish we had time to get into it. Then unbelief would have picked that up and thrown it away. Well, if that's all you can stand in. Yeah. But what did Elijah see when he seen the very first wheel turn? Oh, my. He said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. <laughs> no cloud, no bigger than that. What would you do to water a nation? Why is the cloud so, it's so hot in them skies that it would have vaporized, vapored one away like that. But as soon as Elijah saw the first sign, the first little teeny move, he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Why, well, just a cloud that big. Brother. I please uh, right now at this minute that the power of the Holy Ghost is in this room to cheer every sick person there is that you can feel the cloud the size of a man's hand scream and holler. I hear the sound of the perfect beauty. God has to. But you reject and say, well, I didn't get nothing. Then he'll die out. The hot waves of hell and doubt will fade out of your soul. But when you get that little grain of seed, stand on it. Not like the rock of Gibraltar, like the rock of ages. Stand there! And you'll feel the sound of abundance of rain. You are God's child. Satan has put that affliction upon you. And, the only, and Christ has already healed every one of you. A sinner comes to the and says, Brother Graham, I, I, I want you to pray for me. I want to be good, but uh, you pray for me. Go back to your seat. Next time I say, how many wants to be saved? Here he stands up. You want to be saved, young man? Yes, sir. Well, why don't you get saved? I don't know. Say, there's just a devil hole in that boy. That's all he wants to do right. But there's a spirit of power that won't let him do right. Now, hallelujah. There it is. No wonder if God will never let a true man of God ever say he can heal somebody. Christ done that when he died. I couldn't save nobody or no one else can save anybody but God. And God can't save you because he's already done it. The only thing you have to do is accept it. It's already done. I wasn't saved 20 years ago. I was saved 1,900 years ago. But 20 years ago, I received it and accepted it. If it hadn't the first sin I'd done, God would have wiped you off the face of the earth. Because he said he would. He'd have to keep his promise. I was healed 
1,900 years ago. But I've got to accept it. And the only thing that kept me from being saved when I was 12 years old, because the Spirit hung over me. A devil. Then wait a little while longer. That's the reason you wasn't saved when you become the age of accountability. A spirit. You got with a crowd and had hovered over you and kept hanging over you wanted to do right. There's not a man that's got his right mind but what wants to do right. But there's something that won't let you do right. Is that right? That's the devil. Hallelujah. Christ paid your healing and your salvation. Now, here it is. You get ready. He commissioned his church to cast them devils out. There you are. In my name they shall cast out devils. You ain't going to heal nobody, but you're going to cast the devil away from them so they can accept the healing I've already done. That's right. Preacher stood the platform and preached the gospel. Devils scattered. The man comes to the altar under conviction. Fell down and gets saved. We never saved the man. He cast out the devil. That's right. The man got saved. He come and accepted his salvation. The same thing by divine healing. You sick people here this morning believe that and have been born again and are sons and daughters of God. Christ has already healed you. The only thing that keeps you from being well this morning is the Spirit hanging over you that won't fully let you go out there and believe God's promise that He's done it. That's right. Now, that's my commission. That's what God gave me. What He gave every gospel preacher who will believe. The power and authority to break that spirit. I believe with all my heart that every demon power that's in you at this minute is already broken. I do. I believe there's every sick person in here right now feels a lot different. If that's right, raise up your hand, you who were sick. See there? If, what's the matter? That devil was broke away from you. He has to. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the word. Jesus Christ died for you. You can be healed right now to fulfill that commission. You people that are sick here this morning, your hair will come in here that way while that spirit's upon you. Why do you feel the Spirit of God is getting, oh, I'm sorry. It's way past. All you people are sick. What's sick when you come in here? Won't you come here that I might fulfill my commission? I'm under obligation to my Lord. And my claims as the divine uh, angel appeared to me at my birth and commissioned me at 12 years old and sent me out here a few years ago and said these things. And it's undisputable around the world. Demons and, and infidels and skeptics and agnostics and, and modernists and communists and everything else has attacked it upon the ways of saying it was, some of them said spiritualism, some of them said it's the working of devils, and the others said it's a, it's a mental telepathy. And every single time that there rose up all mighty God stood before me and conquered. Right. Take it anywhere you want to in any nation you want to. Every nation I've entered, every city nearly, I've had to fight that thing. Say mental telepathy. I say, take everybody out of here that thinks it's mental telepathy. Take everybody that knows anything about me out. Bring me the patient. Say it's spiritualism. I say, then if I'm by spiritualism, winning souls to Jesus Christ and conquering devils. What are you doing with what you got? Just by their fruits, Jesus said, you shall know them. You ever see a spiritual casting out devils? You never will. That's right. I said, Jesus said, by their fruits, they shall know them. I said, in the past few years, by God's grace, they've won 350,000 souls to Christ. What have you done? The man bent me out here and said, a certain woman told him I was a, I was a devil. And all my work was done in the devil. They pulled away in the church here and said, God bless you right out with them. And now I got, I said, what have you done? Amen. Show me the fruits. You started down there and got up rooted and said, every branch of your, my heavenly father has a plan to be rooted out. Amen. And I put that tabernacle on the corner kneeling here on a pile of gypsum and weeds and old horse wheat here in this row in this pulpit this morning. What was the palm? God said, I'll bless it. 
Yes, did the false prophets up to I've seen automobiles moving in and out, I've seen the stones going one from another. That was twenty years ago. And today it's still sailing on. And it will sail on. Because it was built here upon sweat and tears of prayer and promise of God. It shall prevail upon this rock I'll build my church. The gates of hell won't prevail against it. There you are. Yes, sir. Don't pay no attention to what they say. I've learned my lesson of listening to people who don't know what they're talking about. I listen to one person that's Almighty God. Jesus said, from henceforth, you ask in my name, ask the Father in my name, and you'll get it. I believe it. One time hard in Texas, I wish this is all. I'm trying to get away from this burning my heart. They come up there, and I've got it in my, well, it's in my little textbook of a thing. said that I was, a, the FBI was there to expose me, that I was a, a, a devil, and a minister, a bunch of them up there, Around somewhere up above Houston there. Huh? Call the name of the place in a minute. Put out a big bunch of tracks and passed them all around the, like that over the auditorium and said that I was Simon the Sorcerer. Casting out devils like Simon the Sorcerer. Witchcraft. So that night here, there's been a couple of girls have been healed there. They come over crying and everything. Said, well, you ought to. I said, they said they was going home. They was afraid. Said the FBI picked you up, Brother Bram, and this girl was putting her right mind on you. Seen that vision over and I said, I, I just, I, maybe I'll cause some trouble. I said, oh, you're scared. I said, you've seen God the healer, have you? I said, watch him as a warrior. Watch him in battle. See how great he is. See how great God is as a warrior in battle. That night I walked out to everybody in this, here in my campaign, Mr. Baxter, my brother, and the two young ladies who was healing them. That minister said today that you was including him. I want you to go out of the building. They went out of the building. I said, now I've got a piece of paper here, which is a custody of the auditorium. Went out and got out thousands of them off the cars, hard little Mexican kids to go get them. I said, I've got a little bill here that says here tonight that I'm Simon the Sorcerer and going to be exposed by the FBI here tonight. I said, all right, FBI, I am on the platform in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to the platform now and expose me. I said, if I'm doing anything outside of God Almighty's Bible, Come here and expose me. I said, where are you at? Thousands sitting there and everybody's crying. I said, I'm waiting for the FBI. According to your paper here, you just go to expose me tonight. Just then I waited a few minutes and I felt the spirits telling out. I said, it wasn't the FBI. I'm no criminal. I said, every time an FBI agent come in my meeting, they got, they got saved. Their chief got saved in my meeting. Captain Al Farrar. I said, and all I said, I, no FBI does anything like that. I said, what it is is two backslidden preachers. I looked hanging out there. There's a great big black thing hanging over the audience. I seen it move right up like this to the second balcony. I said, right there, the step one with the light suit on, one with the gray suit on. They got down like that. I said, don't get down. I thought you was going to expose me. Look like somebody else. I said, you're a couple of backslidden preachers. You have nothing to do with it. I said, now, if I am Simon the Sorcerer and casting out devils and witchcraft as you say I am, and you're holy and righteous and God, come down to the platform. If I'm Simon the Sorcerer, I'll fall dead. If you're Simon, if you're the one that's wrong, you fall dead. Come on down now. We see who's right. That's right. Put it to a They set their heads out. No, don't duck their heads like that. I said, now, people, you see who's in the right and who's in the wrong. They're scared. And then they went out over the top of it. It's hard to go. I said, oh, I see they're leaving. Perhaps maybe they're coming down here. They went out the building as hard as they could down the steps. I stood there and waited. I said, now, we'll just see. Let them come to the platform. Let God show who's who. That's right. I said, if I be falsely, then God will show it falsely. If I'm right, God will always testify for the right. Like it was at Houston. When that Baptist preacher said it, I was a demon and so forth. And you see what took place? When the angel of the Lord come down. Now, you know what happened? We never seen no more of them. That night the Lord told a victory there that still talked about in Harlington. See? Ah, the Lord hath planted it. I'll water it day and night. That some should pluck it from my hand. Come now, boys, will you get the piano right quick? That's the sick people. If we're sick, come around the altar right quickly now. We just got about ten minutes here, and we're going to free you from every demon power that hangs around you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, 
I give unto them my name and authority. I'm trying to, because I believe that God is ordaining me to do so. I believe it if I can only get the people to believe it. Then if this isn't successful, then I believe the Lord of God please before him. I'll go back just straight with the vision, just one or two or three or whatever I can get to in a night. You've been in my meetings, every one of you. You've never seen one of them times of what was perfect. It'll tell you where your sin is. That's the only thing it can do. Healing is already yours. The only thing it is there is sin. Maybe something you're doing in life is not right, or either some, some demon that's holding over you that won't let you believe. Now, you know, if it isn't Jesus told something wrong, all things are possible to him that believes. Is that right? And it lays within you, not in God. If I said here, if I said here, lays, if you won't need a dollar bill, I think I got one. All right. If there's a dollar bill, that's already provided for the needy man. If it is, it's yours if you'll come get it. I don't have to do no more about it. I laid it out there. Is that right? Well, Jesus, when he died, he healed you. He was wounded for your transgression with his stripes. You were healed past him. It's up to you now. Come get it. It's yours. I believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. I believe that. He's let me do it before, and I believe he'll let me do it this morning. You believe that? All right, this is the end here. Move right back this way. I want to get down there so I can pray. There's a pray and cast the evil spirit out so the people can get back to their seats around that wall, if you will, brother. Move right in this way. I look here. What's you to playing around halfway believing anything? Where's that lady was in that wheelchair? You, lady. What? What's you to study there? Jesus Christ has made you whole. Certainly has. Yeah. I seen him lead some, some woman a while ago. I believe this man standing here leading Maybe his wife there. She's crippled or something. Lady, there's no need of you being in that condition. A lady said she had a little girl here, a little child. There was uh, something wrong with it. And all kinds of diseases and things. Deaf, dumb, blind, whatever. There's no need of doing that. Let's bow our heads. I want you to believe. Oh God, our heavenly Father. I come to thee this morning as your servant. Lord, I preach the word. It's your word. It's not mine. I know that you're here to heal the people to make them well. I believe that you will do it, dear God. And I pray you to have mercy. Lord, realizing in these visions the only thing that they can do is to reveal the sins of the people. But Lord, God, may the Holy Ghost do that right now. May he reveal in every heart the hindrance. If there's any sin in their life, then may it be forgiven right now, Lord, I pray through Jesus Christ. Please. And may these group here today be like those the other night. May there be a perfect deliverance of every one of them. May they be healed this morning. Return back Wednesday night happy, shouting and rejoicing. Grandfather, now of all the authority of your word, I go forward to cast out death. To fulfill your word through Jesus Christ's name. Now, Satan, I know you're holding this people. Dark, gloomy, hideous thing holding over them, saying, Well, I'll make a try. But I want to speak to you. I stand in their place between them and God this morning. I stand as a servant of, of Almighty God. My sins are gone through the blood of Jesus Christ by divine faith that I have in Him as the Son of God. And I claim, and the Bible claims first, and I speak as the Bible, that He spoke every power that you ever had at Calvary. And the Bible claims that His disciples are to carry this commission that He had here on earth to the end of the age. And I am his disciple. Therefore, this morning I come as a representative. A representative of Jesus Christ. In his absence, I am sent in his place. 
And whenever I call over the person, your power will break. And the person will be free to go out of here and get well. I challenge you. In the name, the name of Jesus Christ, to his blood I stand. And you leave every person who I lay my hands upon. Not in my holiness. Not in my name. For my name is nothing to you. My holiness is nothing. I have none. But you won't recognize my name, but you'll recognize Jesus. You're going to come out, and I'm speaking to you. I go now and I challenge. And if you try to hold any of these people, may the curse of God come upon you. May you get out. Take your hand off of these Christians. Your dirty, sickening hand. Afflicting and crippling and sickening these people and giving them diseases. You take your hand off in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Glory to God. I ask you to rise in the, His name, going home perfectly well, to glory by God. Rise up. People may raise their hands. Amen. Raise your hands, friend. Praise Almighty God, author of eternal life, giver of every good gift, send thy blessings upon this man who stands here, knowing that this is the only chance of his life to ever be a normal man again, yes. with his hips and limbs all in this condition, over these crutches he's walked, he wants to return to his home to testify to the glory of God drove many miles to get here. And Father, I pray that this will be the hour that he will say in his heart, if others can, I can also. And you died for me to liberate the same as you did for others. Yes. Granted, Father, therefore thou demon hast crippled up his body, I come in this challenge of faith against you to challenge you. In this duel, I adjure thee by Jesus, the Son of God, to come out of the man. Be reverent every word holds the brother. Now, just a moment, it's none of his. Just don't be restless, friend. The presence of the Lord is near. Just be as reverent as you possibly can inside and out. The poor man's come here. He'll never walk no more without crutches if God doesn't help him now. This will be, he come here, he'll be worse than he ever was if he isn't healed. They'll probably have to pack him out if he isn't healed. Because Satan, if he can find enough power to break him down, he'll break him right down if he can. Amen. So now he'll either break him down or God will deliver him and make him perfectly whole. Now, everyone, how many in here believe that God sent me to liberate this man tonight through his Amen. son? Amen. Right. Now, just be real reverent. Keep your heads bowed. You believe it with all your heart, sir. You believe you're going to take these old crutches and throw them in the car and go on home and take them on your shoulder tomorrow and walk up and down the streets of your city testifying for God. You haven't, what life you got left, brother, give it to the glory of God. You will serve him. You will serve him. You've been thinking of that recently anyhow, haven't you? Been thinking of a closer walk. The other day, he said, if I God would only heal me, I'd walk closer to him. And that's right. He said it. Then Amen. another thing, when you was, I see you were in an automobile recently, and you were talking to somebody concerning those things. Is a man sitting in the front seat where you were sitting in the back? Is that true? You were coming down the road, going over a little knob, turning to the right, when you was talking about, is that a truth? I'm not reading your mind, sir. That's God. Now, now you begin to see what I'm speaking of. Now is the time of your deliverance. Almighty God, right, everybody. now while the power of your presence is here, standing here to deliver this man, O oh, eternal God, author of life, send your blessings upon him as I bless him in the name of thy Son, grant him, Lord, through Jesus Christ. Thou demon that's crippled up this man, my brother, He's made his confession. Thank you. His secrets has been told. He's here now to walk. You can't hold him any longer. He wants to glorify God. I come in a challenge against you. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, by a gift of healing ministered to me by an angel, I adjure thee by Jesus, the Son of God, come out of him. There it leaves. Keep your heads bowed everywhere.